observing something in a box, and then when it gets into your body, it has no effect whatsoever. It's insanity. So we should start thinking a little more about the things we put in our body. And, and the nature knows exactly what to do. If you eat healthy, you eat right from the ground. And, you know, you a little bit of bacteria here and there coming off the skin of different vegetables. That's not going to hurt you. That's probably there for health reasons, to be perfectly honest with you. It, you, you know, you're putting things in bleach to get all that stuff out and then skimming off all the chemicals that are in the skin. That's not the way to eat. Not in my world. And they say you eat five different colors at a time. And if you eat five different colors at a time, you have all kinds of different transition metals going into you. And that, they, if they're in there and they're running the things around to your joints and your toenails and everything else, you're all you're in good shape. You know, I mean, you got a lot of better chance of being un, you know, to be stay away from the doctor by doing that than just, you know, fast food is a slow death. Let me put it that way. So now, let's get back to this. Once you get the, this carbo, carboxylation takes all these things through your body, once it stops, they, they have to settle and, and, and harden up or, or go away. And you know, they stabilize. And how do they get stability? Is to, to find a molecule that wants to be with that other molecule. Because everybody has them, that's their job. They grab and hold and let go, grab and hold and let go. Well, eventually they're dead. And when they can't grab and let go, they have to grab and hold. And that's stability. And stability comes usually from, oxi from, from um, oxidation, you know, primarily. And then there's other processes that metals and things come in and they attach. But primarily, it's a drying out process, oxidation. All right, these are the different transition metals, and I've been talking about them. And they are the things that are in your blood, and those are the things that stabilize and, and lock other molecules and, and into these what they call um, metal complexes and they become stable. You can break them back open again with acids and then the, the blood and so forth will come back out of them and the tissues will become flexible again. Now this is the breakdown of, of mud fossils and clay, you see down here clay? mud and mudstone that is your flesh and your red red fleshy material and then as it goes up see slightly calcareous calcareous and mudstone and then it goes into marl and so forth all the way up to lime and limestone now that means you're going from your red fleshy stuff that is on the outside of your body more in towards your your connective tissue and bones and um, organs all the way up to the last thing here, which is limestone, which is really your tendons. That, you know, your tendons form the limestone. Uh, and it's not, not marine looking limestone, which is the CaCO3 clear. It's CaCO3 called porphyritic limestone, which has all kinds of fibers and everything that is the structural part of, of tendons and connective tissue. It's, it's basically fascia will be in, involved in there as well and kaolin clays which are the red bloody investments that's the difference between marine limestone and the ty type of limestone that is from creatures now let's go a little deeper into the chemistry okay this is the chemistry of your body in in chemical terms silicon calcium magnesium um, iron and aluminum and so forth and there's all kinds of other metals in there that they didn't that they don't show here but these are the primary ones they do the work in your in your body now sandstone is is a sedimentary rock and it's uh it's it's eroded away skin cells and that's why you see the silicon is extremely dense in, in sandstone and that's because the, the you're 50 times more silicon in your skin the eroded part right then after you go past your skin you get into mudstone and that's the the stronger um, fleshy part it's still mud and it's still red 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 flesh but it's it's a the mud stone it's not the eroded red skin and you see now you're missing all that silicon is gone because now you're into the fleshy part and of course it's gone here because you're still into the in, in limestone is your tendons now now you see all these other different chemicals that have eroded off of your skin cells and so forth very little calcium you see ca calcium very little calcium because that's your skin 
But when you get into the your deeper parts of your body, you have a lot of calcium in your bones and in your connective tissues. So this tells the story of of the ro rocks. Sandstone is the skin and the eroded areas of your body that are, that are in that in, they were in, touching the water of the floods. And it's 50 times more silicon in your skin than anywhere else in your body. So that's why you find all the silicon is eroded out and in the sandstone. Then you get into the mudstone and, and it shows its chemistry of the flesh and of the um, organs and so forth are all in here. And those do the more work. Then you get into your limestone, which is your tenderness material, your hard, tough CaCO3 material. That gives you st stability and structure to your body. This makes your body work and does, does the work of your body. This is the structure of your body. This is the presentation of your body to the rest of the universe. And that is what erodes. And in the Great Flood, it, it eroded all of the creatures, basically the, most of the skin cells off them, because you very rarely find the skin intact completely, although I have a lot of them that have that. Uh, but skin does erode away, and that's what the sand is. So this is the chemistry of, of the bodies of creatures. Let's just finish up with this, because this is the opals. Now opals are a special case in mud fossils. They are mud fossils because they are created in wet environments, but it's not wet of water. This is wet of blood. What happens is, uh, this is a particular heart, but all kinds of opals, uh, any, any creature can become opalized if it is in blood and it petrifies in blood, it stabilizes in blood. All, and, and this is critical because remember I talked about how important the transition metals are. This is, this is the proof. This is the proof right here. There's your blood, it's red. You see this here? These are, this is like the lining of your, your heart, your ventricle of your heart. And, and I believe these might be the little heart strings. But you see the specific color that that particular type of tissue wanted to take on. And it only wanted to take that on because it needed a specific molecule to bond with it. And that's the green. And it might be copper, it might be vanadium, who knows what it is. But it's, or it's probably a combination of things. But the point being is if this thing here is looking for this exact same color here and here and here and here and here because it's the exact same tissue, that means that this is a specific tissue that requires a certain type of, of transition metal in your blood to service that particular exact tissue. And if that tissue was now yellow, you would know that the transition metal that was supposed to be turned to blue is missing. Or the bacteria that was supposed to accumulate the, 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 the material that would make that turn blue is missing. Or whichever you took into your body didn't have whatever metal is required to make that turn blue. All right, so if you fully, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Everything has its own color, and that means it has a requirement for a certain transition metal. And if you don't have the right bacteria, and if you don't have the right food, and if you don't have the right metal in your body, that thing is not going to pull in the heart the way it's supposed to, and you're going to not be pumping well. It's as simple as that. And all of that stuff is involved in your blood. And you see all these different little colors inside your blood? I believe the blood itself shows it's, it's packed with all these colors. You see? That, that's, that's all I can tell you, I see this. And then when I look into the lungs, I find that the lungs have their own specific combinations of colors. Very, very intricate combinations. Not just simple, um, here, I'll show you right here. If you can see those different colors, that's lung tissue. And those colors are are very different, and they they mean that there's different chemistry in the different little vessels of the lung, and they do not understand that either. This is a lung as well, and it's very hard, I'm sure, for you to see those different colors. But if I put that in water and if I put it under a microscope, you will see that each one of these little little balls has its own specific chemistry. 
So I think there's more going on in the lungs than just transferring oxygen. There's, there's something else is going on here with this chemistry. There's another lung that is, you can see it has a, different metals and shiny things going on inside here. There's a lot of action going on inside that we don't understand, I believe. And there would be a lot more information and health if we did understand the processes that are happening here. Because you, as you saw in that heart, it's very, very specific.